Hyvää iltapäivää kaikille ja iso kiitos ilmoittautuneille ja tervetuloa Tennisliiton webinaariin. Ilmoittautumisia tuli lähes 80, mikä on erittäin hyvä määrä. Ja meillä on tänään mielenkiintoinen aihe, tekninen analysointi ja observointi. Tänään keskitytään alkeistason pelaajiin. Toivottavasti koulutuksesta on teille apua ja otan mielellään kehitysehdotuksia vastaan tuleviin koulutuksiin ja seminaareihin liittyen. Ja vielä muistutuksena, että pitäkää tosiaan teidän oma mikki pois päältä seminaari aikana ja mikäli teillä on kysymyksiä keskeytyksiä, niin sieltä alalaidasta Zoomista löytyy osio Participants ja siellä löydät kautta puheenvuoron ja jälkeen laittakaa mikrofoni päälle. Webinaarin aikana tehtävissä niin käytetään chat-osioa, mikä löytyy myös sieltä alapalkista. Ja meillä tänään kouluttajana toimii Fores Majits Kroatiasta ja näin ole koulutuskielenä luonnollisesti englannin, englannin kieli. Good afternoon for everyone. First of all, I, I, would, uh, I would like to uh, Wish, wish you all warmly welcome and uh, wish you all healthy and your family too. I would like to thank you for all joining here today. And we have around 80 coaches, what is a good number. And we have today a very interesting topic, technical analysis and observation. Today with this topic we are concentrating for beginner players. Hopefully this seminar is helpful for you and Feel free to give me feedback and uh, your thoughts about the upcoming seminars and topics for that. Just to remind you all for English language also that uh, if you can put your microphone off during the presentation and uh, if you have questions, press raise hand and you will find that in the section participants below. And after that, you will get your turn to ask and uh, open your microphone after that. In the task, What we are doing during this webinar, we are using chat board and you will find that also below. Our educator today and also Finnish Tennis Federation consult at the moment in player development and coaches education is Fore Smajic from Croatia. For 15 years, Smajic was responsible in ITF and Tennis Europe uh, in development programs. Focus of this work was uh, helping player development and coaches education in different tennis nations. Before that, Smajic was a uh, national junior coach in Croatian Tennis Federation and traveling coach also with the uh, idea of international travel teams. It has been for you, great to have you help to develop Finnish tennis and let's continue development plans during the next years also. With these words, Mr. Smajic, stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Harry. I'm immediately trying to bring my PowerPoint first in front of you. I hope that everybody will be able to see it. And uh, first of all, I, would, I hope that all of you and your loved ones are healthy and uh, really safe at these uh, challenging times. This webinar, is probably for most of you, for at least many of you, something uh, new, a new experience. And I hope that the technique and uh, especially the internet connection will not let us down. Uh, let's go straight to our webinar. And uh, first of all, I would like to give you an overview of the webinar. So immediately after this uh, start, we will, uh, I will show you one video clip that you will observe. and. Uh, At the end of this uh, webinar, you will give me, uh, sorry, at the end of this vid video, you will give me a feedback about what you think you would like to do with this uh, player that you will see. After that, we will go to define this very shortly what is tennis technique so that actually we can have the uh, same terminology later during the webinar. And uh, I will try to share with you uh, one observational framework that I believe can help you in your work in the future. Part of this is also to identify the key technical elements and agree about some terminology and explain what it means. And then at the end, actually, you will observe again the same 
square, a different stroke, and I've tried to apply this new, I would call it new observation framework. At the end, we will for sure have time for questions and answers. So let's go. So in the first video, I would kindly ask you to observe the back and stroke of a player that will be closer to us. And he will be in a green shirt. Actually, you will see only green sleeves. The video will take in total around three and a half minutes and 50% of the time they will play some points that you can see the, uh, how his backhand shot is working in a, in a game. And then for one and a half, or one hour, four, sorry, one uh, minute and 45 seconds, you, can, you will be able to see his backhand shot playing cross court and down the line being recorded in a practice from the side and behind. As you know, some technical elements, it's easier to identify actually when you're observing from different angles. So the technical elements that I will ask you to observe and actually identify will be like a typical technical uh, elements that we coach. And for this, I would kindly ask you now first to take the, uh, the first uh, document that I sent to you named technical elements to be improved. On this document, you will see the, the first uh, thing to, uh, or my first uh, offer for you is to imp improve something related to contact point, then stance, grip, movement of the arm, movement of the shoulders, and possibility to work on his footwork. So at the end of the video, I will ask you to put in a chat, uh, actually, your opinion, what you will work on with this player in order to improve his technique of the back and shot. And you will just put the number. You don't need to write contact point on any stance or grip, but just one, two, three, four, five, or six. So let's move on and actually see the video. Video is starting now. Points are almost finished. It is the last point. And now you will be able to observe his backhand cross court shot. Are fed by the coach, like in a training situation, and you can now see it from behind. And now you can see still back and cross court shot, but from the side. Now, 
back and down the line. And from the side. Last around uh, 20 seconds. Okay, I'm stop sharing this video. And I'm opening now the chat. So I will kindly ask you to write into the chat just one number. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, what would be your opinion that uh, what you would work with this uh, player in order to improve him technically? So far, I see only one. Pekka put five. I will not ask any questions why you are do, uh, proposing this now. I just would like to see what is your opinion now after this first video. Now everybody is coming. That's great. I will just have to comment. What I can see from your answers is actually that uh, we would work as a coaches on everything except on the number four. If I remember well, it's an arm movement. So, oh, hey, we have also one arm movement here. So it's interesting that we are all coaches and we have such a different opinions what we would work on. Uh, actually, I have expected it, and I believe that each of you has his own explanation why he picked a particular point. Now, the, uh, my idea, and actually what I would like to achieve at the end of this uh, presentation, is that uh, at the end we might perhaps be more aligned in what we would work on with this player in order to make him play better. So, let's start with my first part of the presentation. We'll come back to this at the end when we'll compare with the second video. So, tennis technique. What is actually the tennis technique? I think it's very important that we define it and my first statement here is that technique is the tool for solving tactical situations in a game. There's a reason that I actually show you at the beginning how this player has played back and in in the points in the real match. The technique is actually defined by underlying biomechanical principles that usually we don't see, like balance. Usually we don't see balance, but what we see and what we call technique is a stance or the body posture. And here it's very important to say that each of us has his own individual abilities, body type, and because of that we interpret it with our own style. So I would like now to give you one uh, definition of the style, which is actually personal interpretation and application of the biomechanics and the technique. So when we talk now about the style, always is the question for us as a coaches, how to identify what is acceptable style. In order to put the borders, actually, the number one thing to observe is effectiveness of the technique in the match situation. Is Does the player achieve what he, what is his goal in the game? And second, it should be functional, like every player should be in a balance. 
it should be economical so that if you're a professional player you can actually play for four or five hours because you can uh, need it when you're playing a best of five match in Grand Garros on the clay court and of course to take a look in the risk of injury obviously the styles that would lead to injuries are not really the styles that we will um, accept as a coaches now we move on to the observation framework that I would like to share with you. Number one thing in the observation framework actually is for me to define the tactical intention of the stroke. As you already said, the technique is the tool for solving tactical situations. We need to identify the intention of the stroke because it directly influences the applied technique different intentions actually have different technique. Imagine that I'm playing forehand four meters behind the baseline and want to defend to lower the middle and compare this stroke with uh, actually being in the midcourt and trying to finish the point with my forehand. Basically tactical intention is for me a very important term because it's connecting in general the tactics, what we want to do with techniques, how we will do it. Second element in observation is to identify the element of the effectiveness that we, we need to improve in order that tactically we can achieve the goal better. Third one is to recognize the source of the problem. Very often it's very simple to recognize the consequence of the problem, but sometimes the sources of the problem are hidden. And if you want to be effective in coaching, we should actually work on sources of the problem. And at the end of this process, we have to identify technical elements to be improved. Nevertheless, underlying these all elements is actually the player's attitude. If he has no interest uh, in what he's doing or improving himself, obviously all these other elements are not important at all. So I will now mention it, but after that, I will consider that our player uh, has actually the right attitude and is interested in to develop himself or improve himself at least. So let's start with taking a closer look in the tactical intentions. There are three possible tactical intentions that player might have. The first one is to stay in the point, create advantage or finish the point. And he can apply these uh, intentions in different uh, situations. So can be in defensive, neutral or offensive situation. Obviously I can just bring the ball back or stay in the point when I am four meters behind the baseline during the neutral rally from the, at the baseline or just bring the ball back when I'm three meters inside the court. Could be the reason for it that I'm very afraid of not missing the shot. Which one of this is the best for particular situation? That's another question. Obviously the creating advantage and finish the point we can also do from different uh, situations in the game or we can apply. Let's move on and take a look in another element and that's effectiveness. So effectiveness of course depends on how we look at it depends on the level of the player. When we look at the beginners, beginners and I would call it the beginners and intermediate players like we just saw the guy in the first video I would call him more like an intermediate player what we are usually used to assess the effectiveness is very simple consistency and accuracy of the sh shots by the advanced players there are two other elements that we add actually it's a power and spin that will help him to control the ball and at the top level, at a high performance level of professionals, we have to also consider two additional elements. It's a variety of the shots and disguise. At the top level, just the quality of the shot with, uh, defined with power and spin usually is not enough if you don't have appropriate variety and cannot hide what you want to achieve. It will not be enough at the top professional level. So, Height, depth, direction, spin and speed are the four, five ball characteristics that actually determine the effectiveness of the shot. 
Now I would kind of ask you to take uh, the second document that I share with you. Actually, it's exactly this uh, slide. And for yourself, inside a minute or two, just put the order in which you are observing this uh, five ball characteristics when you are looking at the beginner and intermediate players. Which one would be the first? Is it speed? Is it depth? Is it spin? And then put it in the order one, two, three, four, five. Please take your minute and just do it for yourself. I will not ask you to share it with us on the chat. Just, just put it for yourself on your paper. Harry, can you please let me just know when you finish? Yes, I will say it. Okay. Okay. Finished here. Okay, so now I will share with you actually the uh, framework that I apply. Usually when I look at the beginner and intermediate players, first of all, what I would like to see in the shot that of course they can consistently hit the ball over the net. Then that the ball lands in the court, it's a depth, followed by observing uh, control of the direction and then how or if they are able to uh, apply spin in order to control the different trajectories of the shot. Actually, speed is not really something that is important by uh, observing beginners and intermediate players. Usually speed, we can look uh, see through the depth of the shot, by the, especially by young beginner players. So, we are moving on to the element of recognizing the source of the problem. So first option that I would look for to exclude is that actually the player is not having the wrong attitude. So that's number one thing. And then immediately after that, to identify the tactical intention. Does his tactical intention is actually appropriate for the situation and his level of the game. According to the, some researches that was done, by, uh, conducted by Tennis Canada, around 40% of the mistakes across all the age groups and uh, actually the, uh, the quality levels are related to tactical mistakes, not technical. Because of that, it's very important to be aware and when we uh, assess what we will know, evaluate what we will improve technically, we have to be first of all aware about the tactical intention of the shot that we would like to technically improve. Second source is that player does have the right understanding of how a shot should be played. Uh, this misunderstanding could be illustrated like uh, with a player who should uh, run from backhand to forehand side and after opponent's backhand down the line shot want to counter attack with the forehand and he thinks that actually he should always play from the close stance. Obviously it will not be always possible. Or is it, it perhaps it's also not the best way to keep the balance, for example. Third element that I'm always looking for to observe and uh, to feel if, he, if my player has a problem here is uh, muscle tightness. If you are tight, you cannot produce uh, optimal technique or appropriate technique. Muscle tightness can be a consequence of the fear, if the player is in fear of uh, missing a shot, but also, especially by the beginner players, is the way to create control, namely by blocking, freezing the, uh, the different, uh, uh, the wrist, elbow, and, and wrist and elbow, and create uh, like a, just one segment of the body, whole arm, we can control the movements better because we have less options to move. I know, perhaps that's something what is not, uh, sound doesn't, doesn't sound so uh, familiar, but that's the reason why so many, especially young beginner players, are pretty tight, because there's the way that they try to control the movement. 
reading and movement to the ball can be another source of the technical problems. Reading means reacting, seeing and reacting to the ball and then uh, picking up the right movement technique in order to find the right distance to the ball at the contact. Reading is typically related with the young beginner players and this movement technique with intermediate or even advanced players. No or bad feeling for the movement. Uh, example here that I would like to give is when the player has uh, no feeling when to have a, a solid or firm wrist. As we all know, the firm wrist should be at the contact point when you need to control the racket head at the contact and to have a stable racket head at the contact. And the many, especially uh, intermediate players who are trying to add more power and uh, then gripping the racket or tightening the grip during the whole swing. Obviously, it will slow down the racket. And of course, motor abilities can be a source of the problem. Like, uh, for example, core control and core strengths are preconditions for having a good body control in the air by serving. Without that, it will be very difficult to keep a good balance. Now, after going through this possible source of the problem, I will move to the key technical elements that I will try to identify and define so that later on when we will observe a player again, we have the common language, understand each other perhaps much better. I will start it with a question. What is the key problem for beginner player? Power or control? I believe that we all will be in agreement that control is our key challenge with especially beginner players. In order to have control, I would uh, like to say that if, the during, if during the shot player is in stable position, balance, and is able to meet a ball in optimal contact point timing with smooth movement, that means good rhythm, he will be able to maintain control. So I leave you one more time to read this statement one more time. Actually, these three functional elements, how I call them, are working together. Balance, timing, and rhythm. So let's take a closer look to each of them. Let's start with balance. By observing balance, there are two elements. The first one is base of support. Here on the left side of the screen, you will see Serena Williams in uh, actually more like a static balance that we also prefer by our younger and beginner players. And on the right side, we see Djokovic in dynamic balance. By static balance, we can be sure that player is in a good static balance when we can see that, uh, we, that his uh, center of gravity is inside the base of the support, a bit lower, but will enable him pretty stable and safe, let's call it, position. Actually, Djokovic also has his center of gravity inside his base of support that is actually created by the opposite movement of his legs, what enable his whole body weight to move toward the ball into the shot. Second is the vertical axis that we know that all the top players are controlling so well even if, uh, if, when they are under pressure in tough playing situations. Like we can see some examples here on the screen. When we talk about timing, that means reading the ball, seeing the ball coming and reacting. The first thing that we would like to observe is that player recognize the time when the opponent has hit the ball and link it with the time split step. So at the time when the opponent has the ball on the racket, I should be or in the air. Time shoulder turn toward the forehand or backhand side. What will actually tell me that as a coach that my player has recognized direction. And time means for me that he started the tur shoulder turn before the ball crossed the net. Time moving toward or away from the ball shows me that he also recognized the depth of the ball. And uh, I want to see this movement before the ball bounce on his side of the, of the court. Optimal contact point when he is hitting the ball. Rhythm. Or, Synonym for, synonym for it is also body work. 
is first of all, smooth movement through the contact zone. Second, smooth transition from back to forward swing, what actually creates this loop that we are usually teaching younger players. Progressive acceleration toward the contact point, what will add the spin, first of all, for control and coordination of shoulders and arms that in my opinion is very important to be included pretty soon, especially with young players, I would say in orange court, for example. Why? Because actually by coordinating shoulders, actually trunk and arm, we can produce appropriate amount of power. Instead that the players are, are looking for the power in the big back swings and behind the body, what creates all kinds of technical problems and as a consequence, the problems in controlling the ball. And then of course, coordination of leg drive and shoulder turn, or the trunk turn, uh, is something what will be added by the advanced players in order to get more power, more racket speed. The last one is the footwork, that is also part of the body work that brings us into the optimal position. Actually, the rhythm of the footwork, we pick the right technique and so on. All these three key, as all three elements, balance, timing, and rhythm, are realized actually in a contact point. What record does at contact point will determine the ball characteristics and effectiveness of the shot. And this uh, can be actually def defined by path, angle, and speed of the record at the contact. I want to emphasize here that this path, angle, and speed are related to around 20 centimeters prior and after the impact, not what the record does behind the body during the backswing. So parts of the record can be level, a flat shot, let's say, low to high for top spin or high to low for slice shot from the baseline. Angle of the record can be observed in terms of vertical angle, how op open is the record over the the sky or close, or what is important for the height of the ball, and horizontal angle, how much it is uh, linked to the right or left, what is of course uh, linked with the direction of the shot. Speed of the racket can be increasing, decreasing, or maintaining. Increasing, again, we can uh, connect with a topspin shot from the baseline, decreasing for the drop shot, maintaining by the block volley. So all three uh, functional uh, uh, elements should work together that we create optimal contact point for a player in order to maintain the control, but also later to add power. Now, we came to the end of my presentation and then we will move on now to look at the player again. So what I will now ask you to do is to observe one more time the player that we see at the beginning. And we will now look at his forehand stroke. What I will ask you to do together with me, so you, don't, you will not need to rush, is to again identify technical improvement goal, but now for his forehand stroke, by actually uh, uh, applying the framework that we just went through. And I would like you to now think about the work with this player that you will have, let's say, during one month, so four weeks, and with two practices per week, because I think it's important to have in mind how much time I have to improve something. So you will have to take this into account by picking up uh, the element that you would like to work on. When you will uh, look at the, uh, the player, first you will again see the same point. So you will have a chance to see him playing points, but now focusing on his forehand shot. And try first of all to identify tactical intention of his forehand shot that you would like to improve technically. That's very important for me. Also, during the points, I will kind, kindly ask you to define element of effectiveness, height, speed, uh, high spin, uh, depth, or direction that uh, you will like to improve, that he is more effective in achieving his tactical intention. I will stop after the points for a minute just to give you time to write down for yourself what you decided. And then we will move to 
look at his forehand from the side and behind for cross court and down the line. And that will give you enough time to define technical element to be improved. Take care of all uh, materials that you have around you and uh, to help how to think, how to <laughs> define yourself. And then later on, we will go together and you will in the chat bring your answers one by one, but please don't do it now. I will uh, lead, uh, lead you through the answers so that we all have the same logic and then we can talk about it later on and discuss the observations. Okay, I have to stop sharing this and share with you another video. Okay, that's second. No, stop sharing. Sorry. Okay, this is the video number two. Okay, I give you just a minute. Please Harry, let me know when you are finished as a, some kind of criteria for me. So please identify the tactical intention of the forehand cross court shot that you would like to improve technically and the element of effectiveness related to this tactical intention that you would like to improve. Ready here. Okay, I hope all the others are also ready. So now I am uh, restarting the video again that you can observe his forehand shot. And now think about actually the technical element that you would like to improve in order to be more effective in particular identified the tactical intention of his forehand stroke. Still cross court. And the down the line shot.
Okay. Stop sharing and I'm going back to my presentation. Now, let's do the following together. So now, first of all, what I will ask you to do is that you bring in your chat, actually your decision about the tactical intention by using one of the, uh, one of these letters, S, C or F for staying in a point, create advantage of finishing the point uh, for the forehand shot that we, you will improve technically. Harry, just give me a sign when you finished. Ready? Harry, can you hear me? Yes, ready here. Okay, so we move on. And now after putting the tactical intention in a chat line, please identify the, or put the, actually the element of effectiveness. HI for height, DE for depth, DI for direction, and SP for spin. We said that speed will not be the element at the moment that we look for to really improve by the beginner intermediate players. Just let me know, Harry, when you are finished. Ready here. Great, let's move on. Now we are coming to the critical part to identify, identify a really technical element that we will work on. So now first, in first step, I would kindly ask you to put only T for anything what is related to timing, P, anything what is related to the contact point, what can be path, angle, or speed of the racket around the contact, but also grip. For balance or stance, you put B, and for the rhythm or body work, any element, R. Harry, just let me know when you put it. Ready here. Great, I hope everybody else also. And now, before you put something, I will go through this uh, explanation of, the, of the, this uh, table that you see now in front of you. So by timing, you can uh, see that one, uh, one is actually for timing of the opponent's uh, contact points of the split step, two of the time shoulder turn, three moving toward the weight uh, to the ball, and four optimal contact point, timing of the contact point, own, own contact point. And then now in, in case that you pick up timing, then you can now pick up one, two, three, or four that you will add in your chat. For the ones that actually put C as a contact point, now you can put also to de define it more precisely, P for path, A for angle, S for speed, or G for grip that you would like to work on. The ones that put B, they can put uh, B, B like a base of support that you would like to improve, perhaps widening, axis, control of the uh, trunk axis, and S for improving the stance. And the last one, they pick up R for rhythm or body work. One is a smooth movement around the contact, yeah. The smooth transition from uh, back to forward swing is number two. Three is coordination of the trunk, actually shoulder and the arm movement. Four, legs and the arm. And then the five is a footwork, that you would do something with a footwork technique. I put it uh, here on the screen. I leave it on the screen for a minute and then Harry tells me that he's uh, finished and actually we will go to the chat and look at what did you put in.
ready here. Okay, I'm stop, stopping sharing uh, my presentation and we'll take a look now in the chat. Actually now in the chat, I, I see, okay, some of you have added, not, now I'm first time also seeing how I, what I can see here in terms of the chat. because I see that most of you just started from the eff effectiveness, like a height, spin, but I don't see that some the people actually, okay, some of them have been put, okay, C's for creating advantage. So I take a look now in what actually you can see by Harry. Harry is down there at the bottom and he put number two, what would be from uh, actually creating advantage, Harry, yeah? Then actually, actually, I might be the only one then who understand this wrongly. I was thinking about timing there, like a time shoulder turn. I was watching these four elements in timing, so. But the first element that I should see in a chat is the tactical intention and tactical. Tactical, tactical intention can be for s uh, staying at the point c creating advantage and uh, and uh, actually the third one is f finishing the point yeah this i had that uh, c creating advantage creating advantage okay and then second element that that i would like to see is actually is it uh, what is the element of effectiveness that you are working on Effectiveness and then uh, what were the options there? Um, <laughs> uh, effectiveness were height. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I height pick up I, I I pick up their their spin on the video. Yeah. Okay, spin. So creating advantage spin and then actually uh, is it a timing rhythm balance? Uh, contact point. Contact point. Okay. So that would be then a, a C, and what would be in the contact point, the, uh, the element, it, would it be path of the racket, angle, speed, or grip, because those are the options that I gave there. Uh, angle. Angle. Okay, now I would ask you which, is it a vertical or horizontal angle? Uh, which one is the like the, I was uh, thinking in the videos with the with the uh, ankle for the cross shot, especially there. I think there were one or two that uh, that uh, that could be like uh, is it vertical or horizontal? I don't remember now. The, with the direction is related the horizontal angle of the racket and actually the effectiveness. Can you remind me on what was the effectiveness that you linked it with? Because I don't see it here. Spin effectiveness was with this, uh, these options, height, depth, okay. direction. Speed. May I then use you now for as a first example? Of course. Uh, my question is here because you want to improve in terms of effectiveness direction of the shot, then later on you are using spin for doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I linked that, uh, that to the the, the the main thing what I like the contact point and then mm -hmm. then uh, uh, I was searching like a little bit effectiveness and uh, to hurt the opponent with the uh, with the top spin because the guy really tried to use the top spin but it was linked to the contact point that it was maybe too close for the body and that's why I so it was related to timing no problem with this only actually if you but when you are thinking about effectiveness in terms of direction which which uh, direction did you have you been th having in your mind is the cross court cross court yes i think uh, it and also the, the contact point i think it was the be it was better to the line but now one thing 
I know I am sound. I sound now provocative, but actually, with spin, do you control really direction or actually the depth or height of the ball over the net? Yeah, actually, height of the ball over the net. Yeah, now, this is where I'm pointing at. Is actually is, is yeah, yeah, I understand. Considering yeah, yeah. one thing and saying another thing, so this is the the uh, very important thing when we talk about identifying element of effectiveness. Because I can link the spin with the controlling of the, the depths, but I can also controlling uh, different angles on the court. So that's actually a very interesting thing. Now I see somebody else like Miko put all the elements together. Would somebody be like our also, uh, how to say, uh, volunteer to share with us uh, his own way of thinking? Actually, I can help him by asking questions step by step. So let's now try to involve other people in our conversation. I don't hear anybody. <laughs> uh, Saku has the microphone on. <laughs> Hello. Saku, thanks for taking uh, the chance to talk to us. So can I ask you also to, uh, or let's say, can I lead you so that everybody hears the, the way you thought and analyze the player? Can I lead you? It will be easier perhaps for everybody to yes. follow the same logic. So by the forehand shot, what was the, uh, what was the tactical intention of the forehand shot that you would like to improve technically? Uh, like Harry said also, I, I think also that he has some challenges to hit cross court, mm -hmm. and and uh, I okay, think okay, no, no, no. Not co uh, uh, tactical intention is it creating advantage, staying in the point or finishing the point? Uh, I put staying in a point. Okay, because now or it's maybe a... maybe maybe can be also I put like staying in the point but offensive way okay. and move opponent in direction. Okay, so if I can, if I'm imagining what you think is typically when the opponent play backhand shot down the line, that he's able to almost like counter attack with his forehand cross court. Is that what you have in mind? Yeah, yeah, that or also I I saw some point that he played down the line because he can play cross court and he almost uh, okay. at least. I okay, guess somebody he is in trouble after that. So, okay, let's try to now uh, uh, agree. Now, you stay by the first statement where you said that you would work with him on the staying in the point with a cross court shot. Yes. Okay, perfect. No, just for the audience that we agree. Yes. Yes. And uh, in this cross court shot, what, which element, uh, sorry, which element of effectiveness you would like to improve technically? Is it height, depth, direction? direction so that he better control the cross court direction yes okay so just for also me and the audience to clarify does he does he uh, when he's not uh, achieving the right direction his cross court shot goes toward the middle too much or in out yeah yes toward, toward the, the middle. middle okay so to move it more to the corner great now we exactly understand what you mean with this yes and uh, in terms of technical element in which area you are looking for technical improvement? Is it timing, rhythm, this around contact point, or uh, balance? Sorry. I'm not sure about that. I should test. I think it's both. What are your first I, mean, I, think, uh, I think it's both. I think it's timing, coordinating okay. trunk, but more I would say it's a contact point. It's uh, too much behind, so uh, like uh, this angle, uh, horizontal angle. Now it's a, uh, interesting what you said, because now for everybody, obviously, especially by the beginners, intermediate, beginner, intermediate players, we will not see only one technical element. It could be three or four technical elements that we see. And the question is always a challenge to pick up the first one, because if you pick up the first one right, the others will unfold and player will get some self-confidence because he will be successful, he will feel improvement and so on. 
So now with Saku, I will try to find out what we would perhaps start with, or you actually, because you said, yes, one is actually the timing of the contact point, and the second is the timing of the shoulder turn. Mm -hmm. What is the difference for you? Because for me, that's one element that I always mention during my course is that actually coaches forget that without right shoulder turn, you cannot meet the ball optimally in front because if your shoulder stays behind, you cannot meet the ball in front of the body. Now, now it's a question of what you see as a source of the problem is because he's not moving the shoulder or he's actually just then doing at the right time the shoulder turn, but then uh, it's too, let's say, uh, too slow with his arm movement forward and trying to give you some options. I would start with the shoulder turning. I would say that you need to start earlier than your shoulder. Yeah, because I, I would agree with your way of thinking because it's uh, actually, I cannot meet with the racket in optimum if my shoulders are not working mm -hmm. before at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> So mm -hmm. that, that, can, uh, that can be very good uh, observation, I would say. And uh, I'm coming now to one interesting point between your observation and Harry's observation. And uh, you said that you would work on staying in the point and he would work on creating advantage. Now, that's unfortunate to the people, perhaps this is first time that we do like this, so they didn't follow me and put uh, all these elements uh, in the chat because it was interesting how you actually have observed the player I mean everybody because there is not always just one perfect or one right solution I would say that what now uh, Hari and um, uh, Saku showed me through their decision in which tactical intention they would improve technically the shot it reflects their coaching philosophies at the moment for this level of the player and Sako tells me that for him he would like more that he's more resilient in actually staying in a point create uh, let's say the opportunity to hit more balls back and Harry was more uh, let's say thinking how his player would be actually dominating the points so that re uh, what I want to say with this, that your decisions will be directly related with your coaching philosophies and you have to be, as a coaches in general, be aware about it. Sakwe, I would like to hear your reflection on this or <laughs> comment. I, 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 I totally agree what you said. I, I think so. I, I totally agree. And, but I, for me, it's very related to the level of the player mm -hmm. what is next step and i think this this guy in his level he he can't he he need to work on basics mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah perfect and harry your comment just that we exchange a little bit our opinions and and explaining our views i I, I totally agree with Saku said about the level of the player. I uh, the more more creating advantage advantage for the forehand was that uh, I really really trust that this guy is is gonna dominate in the future more in the forehand side and with his forehand game than uh, more than with his backhand. It looks like it's gonna be like a more surviving from there. Okay, good. Very good. And actually, it's interesting here. I'm uh, looking now down. Uh, David was putting at the bottom also like creating advantage, height, contact point, angle of the racket in the contact point, and then axis. Now, David, if I can make co a comment on this, actually, angle of the racket is related to contact point. Can I ask you why you put axis here? David, can you take the microphone, take the mood off? Thanks. You don't hear him? You will find that in... Yes, now it's... Now, okay. okay. Yeah, uh, axis about the, the shoulders uh, turn, the shoulders turn like to be, to be uh, a bit more open uh, uh -huh. to, to play cross court because uh, too often he plays down the line uh, 
quite okay, but uh, for uh, for cross court, like the the position of the shoulders should be more open, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I put axis. I don't know if it's, if you mind that by axis, but the shoulders uh, turn. Okay, uh, here even now one thing is the terminology and uh, what we consider when we talk to each other it's important that we then use the same termino terminology because on the contact point. Uh, here, the contact point would be for me a, co a consequence of the source of the problem that is in a timing when he is uh, rotating the shoulders. And, you know, that's uh, my comment for you, just. Yeah. Con point is a consequence. The real source of the problem that you are addressing is actually turning the shoulders at the right time. And then the consequence yeah. will be the timed contact between the racket and the ball. So the, the contact point would be would be of course better if he if he if he opens a bit earlier the shoulders in order to play cross court, and uh, I put height also because usually uh, the they play uh, like uh, like just fifty centimeters like uh, I would suggest more two three meters to a more more security more security to a more uh, safer ball first. But now my question for you, how actually the shoulder earlier shoulder turn will influence the height of the ball over the net? Um, yes, yes, it can, it can affect. Yes, I would say yes. How? Can you explain to me? No, I'm not provoking, just the point is that when we as a coaches decide something, it's very important to have very good arg arguments for ourselves, why we are doing that. It's not that mm. you are justifying to me, it's more I'm provoking you to have a better explanation for you as a coach, not for me. As I said, we can have also different opinions. So if I, if, I, if I prepare early enough with my shoulders, then I, I can control the height. I can decide if I want to, to play, uh, like in, the, in, this, in this player, to play a bit, to play a bit higher. And, uh, and then uh, it, will be, it will be safer. I, I guess it will be safer and then we'll have more uh, success with his forehand cross court. So earlier he will prepare. Then after he can he can control the height of the ball and then okay. be more safe. My comment for you is now imagine actually when I'm trying to open my shoulders earlier, I will get the contact point more in front of me, mm -hmm. and that will really be a, then I will be able to better control exactly this is what the Sako said the angle of my cross court shot. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you really want, now if you think about yourself. Forget what we just said and what we are looking at in the screen. Which are the three key elements of the movement that influence the height of the ball over the net? Um, in any direction. Uh, the free key, uh, you talk about. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, the, um, the, how, the angle. The angle of the racket, exactly. So one is the angle, then, um, then the contact point. But when you say contact point, you have to, yeah. Okay, angle of the racket at the contact point. Yes, yeah. exactly. Perfect. Yeah. And what is another one, another really important one that uh, determining the height of the ball? Uh, so the angle of the racket and the other one is? Then of course, uh, I, I need to put more spin. Um, because Usually, usually with spin, I can, I can put the ball a bit higher than if I, if I play too flat. But okay. the, the role of the spin is not to control that, uh, to, to get the ball higher. The spin gives you a control that the ball is actually shorter when it's higher. Because yeah. by more spin, you get a shorter trajectory. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, uh, spin will not really make the ball higher. It will actually help you to control higher trajectory to land into the court. It will control the distance. But mm, another uh, element, just yeah, it's true, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah now, yeah. this is this chicken and egg. What is now the source of the problem? I would say, yes, as you said, angle. And the second is, is a trajectory, path of the racket. How, if I hit from down up? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, these are the two elements. So, why I'm saying that? Because for me, what you said later on, uh, your logic is not following each other. Height and turning mm. the shoulders are not directly related. So just think when you are making your analysis and thankfully part of it, so it's no criticism, uh, that 
actually you when you work on something that you have your uh, how to say uh, logic from tactical intention through effectiveness of the shot and the technical elements because for me you have been now having in mind two different technical elements that you want to work with actually at the same time and mm -hmm. now when you find the drill what mm -hmm. will be the drill will it be the drill that you will bring the racket lower or, or racket and controlling racket angle or it will be movement of the shoulders in terms of timing earlier as you know if you put three different uh, advices to your young player at the same time usually they are <laughs> blocked it's too much yeah it's too much you're true yeah, it's too much uh, it's too, too much, much at so the this, same time so i hope that this what i just uh, presented can help you to really be more sure where to start with what is actually exactly the technical element i should start with and then of course adding other elements thank you very much for being part of it only if you have any other question from your side for me then please go on Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being part of this. Anybody else hurry to be perhaps also invited to share with us his way of thinking, if it is, especially if it's different than what we just uh, talked about. Now, somebody want to share? Yes. Yeah, Jarno. Sorry, Jarno is putting that he he wants to share. So, Jarno, Please. open your mic. Hello, Jarno. Hello. Yes, now we can hear you. So Hello. Jarno, when you start, can you follow the same logic to start from tactical intention? Effect yes. Effect over the technical yes, aspect? I can follow, but uh, in the last one, I was going quickly to the bathroom and I didn't <laughs> hear the last one, but I can start for what I watched when he played the forehand. Uh, I think he was trying to create advantage. He played to players backhand and uh, most of those shots he finished as a winning point in the end. And two points he lost when he was maybe supposed to little bit maybe defense. Okay. He got few balls uh, to uh, backcourt to the forehand corner and uh, he tried to went to the guy's backhand and made mistakes to the net. Okay. So now yes. when you would like to improve technically his forehand to, to be more effective, what would be the tactical intention of his forehand shot that you would focus on to improve technically? Creating mm. a staying or finishing the point? Mm, in in two months time or one month okay it could be also two months doesn't matter one or two months it doesn't matter it's like okay uh, no from what i saw he did well with that player but let's say that uh, if he would play somebody else mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm. <laughs> Because now, uh, just to help you, yeah. now is the question, and this is also one of the key messages that I would want to share with you. When we do the technical improvement, it should help a player to play the game better. The guy is a recreative, recreational player, adult, and he doesn't want to practice too much technique, but and when he's in, investing time, he wants to play better against the players of the similar level, of course. So now, this is now a question for us. Will he be more effective if he will be more in charge of the points, like Harry proposed with the creating advantage of being actually more stable, more resilient by actually staying at the point better as Saku proposed? What is, what is your feeling? Mm, I think both can work, but... Uh, uh, he will ask you. I have to choose. I have to choose. I want to play better. <laughs> what? Uh, as a coach, you will have to choose how to help him. Mm. True, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's the reason why he's coming to you. Yes. <laughs> oh, then we can choose, choose the same as Saku. So you would go for Saku's solution. Okay. okay. Anyway, 
Any other element in terms of technique that, and effectiveness that you would be perhaps uh, looking for differently? Than no, when, when I was looking, the, uh, he had the task to hit cross court. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, watched that he's coming always uh, super close to the ball. Uh, I would start with uh, the anticipation and uh, uh, the movement to the ball, so the distance to the ball. But actually it will change a lot of things, but uh, to get better in time, there would be, I would want him to hit uh, deeper. Okay, deeper, okay. You see, uh, it's interesting because obviously we as a coach still have uh, different opinions. Uh, sorry, sorry to create more height. A height. So yeah. now we are closer to your colleague yes. before, yeah? Okay. No, no, it, it's... Uh, to uh, height to create uh, depth. Yeah. There is no just the right, one right answer, I would say. But it's very important when we decide something that we have good arguments for ourselves and that will help us to convince our player that what we are proposing actually will help him and that he will play the game better and will create more specific technical drills. Uh, now for everybody, my comment, not for you, for everybody, my comment is uh, very often I see coaches working in technique, but with uh, very unspecific drills, like uh, example is a uh, typical advice, take a record back earlier. What really doesn't help, <laughs> it's so, Nothing wrong, nobody said something wrong, but it's not really specific help for a player who is late in the contact point. You understand what I mean? I mean everybody. Any other comments from you? Uh, no, then uh, uh, I would work on the height to create depth, but uh, when he starts to move to better position to hit the ball, uh, he, I saw that he's not using legs because he was so close to the ball all the time. So when he's uh, further back, he needs to use his legs to get something to the ball. Now my question for you is, because, yes. uh, yeah, because of his uh, age, and yes. he pay some overweight, how much in one or two months you can improve his footwork? You understand what my question? I, I would not say not <laughs> much, but I, I think we could get some lift out of those legs to lift okay. the ball. Now the question is always to get into agreement with the player, also what he is ready to work on. Obviously, very important element is here because yes, if he would take around ten kilos uh, from his body weight, I am sure that he would be much better with his footwork. That would be the best uh, drill for him. <laughs> But the question is, does he want? Obviously, we will not uh, tell him that he is fat <laughs> and then uh, to, to start uh, something else, uh, some other diet. Anyway, thanks for your comments. And uh, Harry, thank you very much. Uh, Harry, now it's uh, quarter past two. What is your suggestion? We leave it still for some additional discussions. I would like to close slowly. I'm asking you because now you are taking over slowly regarding the time. If there is uh, some some comments, uh, feel free to share share that now. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna we gonna close close the seminar. Let's wait for a second. If yeah, some fifteen people already left. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, there seems to be no no questions. So th thanks a lot for you again. This was very, very good and high quality approach to the topic. And uh, thanks all for joining this webinar. And we will continue these webinars in two weeks. So 23rd of April. And subject is going to be the exact same, but the target group will be advanced players. And we're going to publish this on the Federation social media and I'm going to send you after this the Fourier's presentation and then the exact information about the upcoming webinar. Yeah. So the second from, part would be anyway related to advanced players. We will use everything what uh, 
uh, we talk today about, but there are several things that uh, I believe should be considered and added by observing and analyzing advanced players. Yes, yes. So once more, thanks and um, for everybody, have a nice day, keep safe and uh, keep, in, keep in touch. So that's, that's from, from my side. And if you want to for, add something, feel free to add. Yeah, I would like to thank everybody for taking uh, part in this webinar. And uh, you can also give my contact details to the guys, uh, because I see that now David is asking me about his, uh, my, uh, like a personal, like a comment. So David, thank you for being part of it. And uh, Harry can send to you my WhatsApp number so we can get in touch so that uh, I give him uh, like yes. a, a personal comment so we don't uh, uh, stay here with everybody else. Okay, I will put it in the, in the same email. Thank you. Okay, take care. Thanks. All the best, everybody. Bye-bye.